program. It is my pleasure to extend greetings to all that are gathered here today. It's indeed an honor to induct these new students into the Masters of the Biomedical Sciences program here at Rocky Vista University. This is our third annual induction ceremony, and this is our fourth class of students that we will be inducting here today. Today you will hear from many speakers, our university president, one of our own former uh, MSBS students, a beloved Com faculty member, and one of our talented MSBS faculty members. Would our esteemed faculty please rise? All of our RVU family, please rise. All of us, including your peers that are next to you today, represent the network, the community, the family here at RVU. We really, truly are a family at RVU. We will be here to teach you, support you, guide you through these next nine exciting months. I am really excited and honored to start off this process with our white coat induction ceremony today. I would now like to invite Dr. Clint Adams, president, and CEO to the podium to deliver a welcome. Thank you, Tom. Wow, I, I had to chuckle. First, because uh, your esteemed and astute leader that you'll be sitting at the, the foot, foot of didn't stand up when Dr. Town introduced the faculty because he said, well, they wanted the esteemed faculty to stand up. So he. Uh, Humility is one of his better qualities, no question about that. And on the other hand, when I saw you guys running in, you're supposed to enjoy that. Uh, it reminded me of uh, when I took over uh, as a commanding officer in Virginia uh, <laughs> at the Naval Hospital there. And, and at the end of the, I mean, the ceremony went on and on because they retired the previous commander and, and, uh, and military protocol as such, you know, that the senior people, you know, if they stand up and the exit is kind of like the entrance. and. And when it was time to stand up, I just took off. And I was supposed to be last, not first. And I said, well, my excuse was, well, I got to get to work. And you guys got to get to graduation, right? So, uh, so we're looking for that, uh, that excitement, that enthusiasm. Uh, enjoy the ride. Uh, it's just the beginning. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's still life. Uh, you know, I, I'll never forget when uh, I was graduating from undergrad and my fraternity brothers found out I was going to medical school for four more years and they said what are you crazy four more years of school and I said well I thought about it for a minute I said well what am I gonna do uh, uh, get a job and pay taxes I might as well enjoy life and and uh, well, maybe go in a little debt just the reverse but that's okay we'll, we won't talk about that right now uh, but indeed we here at Rocky Vista are all about achieving new heights in medical education and you have selected an, es an esteemed program that is you know, breaking barriers. You've got a lot of places you could have gone. I think you're gonna be really delighted with the culture that we have here at Rocky Vista, the family, the close-knit uh, opportunity to get to know each other, to get to know your faculty who, uh, who, who are here because of you. Uh, they chose this path because of seeing you folks grow and be successful in your transition to whatever it is next. And some of you will decide medical school is not it. You know, uh, PA is not it. That, you know, maybe you want to go out in the industry. Maybe, you know, this is your time. And I'll get a chance to chat with you in a little panel and I'll tell you about uh, some other stories that connect to that and, and how I've uh, been able to enjoy uh, the success of uh, so many graduates from a program like this. But again, we w welcome your family and friends uh, uh, for the support that they've given and will continue to give, particularly if you choose to go on for a four years and then three years and then it continues. Uh, uh, they will be there for you and you'll be there for them. So again, welcome to the RVU family. You're gonna get the little tattoo whether you like it or not because you'll always be an alum. You know, you can divorce that significant other, but you can't divorce your, your, your graduate degree, can you? They say, let's we take it back. I mean, 
All right. Well, again, uh, I just enjoy meeting you folks and, uh, and welcome you. And let me introduce you now to someone who really has something to say, uh, student Dr. Zorio. Uh, Zorio? Am I close enough? Yes. She's always, it's always been a tongue tie. Come on up here. Uh, here's a, an excellent reason, an excellent example of what you can become. Thanks, Dr. Adams, as always. So, um, as he said, I'm student Dr. O'Neill Azorio. I'm currently a second year at RVU. And um, I graduated the MSBS program in 2018, so just not that long ago. And it was, it was a really, really awesome experience for me. So, I just wanted to start out by just welcoming you. Like, this is a really exciting day, you guys. I remember sitting exactly where you are, like yesterday. So um, just welcome, especially family and friends too. Thank you for being here as a support. So um, like I said, I'm a current second year medical student here at RVU. And today I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the unexpected things in life. Um, I'd like to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. I went to the same school in Oklahoma from preschool to the day I graduated high school. After that, I found myself at CU Boulder. And let's just say I had a bit of a hard time adjusting, you know, with the balancing work and play, and I left my sophomore year with three C's under my belt, and I was encouraged to pick a new profession by my pre-med academic advisor. Um, I was devastated, to be honest, um, but I swore that I would fight back, and I found myself on the uptrend for the rest of my college career. I finished undergrad with a 3.3 GPA and a mediocre MCAT score, and I worked as a scribe in the emergency department for a year until I found myself work, or sitting exactly where you guys are right now. As I sat in those chairs, I had expectations of this program, and I thought I knew exactly how it would go. I thought I would do my best, make some friends, and hopefully make it into medical school. Um, solid plan, right? Um, also, I remember the speech that was given my year by student doctor Brittany Stansberry, who is now a third year medical student, when she told the story of her appendix bursting the weekend before the master's program started. And I remember thinking like, oh, wow, that's horrible luck. I hope nothing like that happens to me. Uh, let's fast forward to the second to last block exam in the program when I found myself in a series of completely unexpected events. I was stressed beyond belief with studies and over the course of three days, my long-term boyfriend dumped me, my aunt was diagnosed with stage four lymphoma and my grandmother passed away. Let's talk about unexpected. <laughs> I remember feeling helpless and I had no idea how I was gonna get through all of these life events while still keeping up with my studies. Here's where the good side of unexpected in life comes in. I never expected that Dr. Town Dr. Roberts and Dr. Brandau would be waiting for me in their offices with Kleenex, hugs, and immense reassurance. And this is not the only time this happens. They are always there. Um, and I never expected that my entire class would come together to give me handwritten notes of encouragement and support. And I certainly never expected to not only pass my last set of tests, but to graduate at the top of my class only a few weeks later. And let me tell you, I'm sure that that pre-med advisor in college never expected that of me either. Um, and I really, the thing that I really have to say today is that I never expected what kind of impact this program would have on my career. Um, I know that many of you sitting here before me have the ultimate goal of becoming a physician, dentist, PA, or nurse. And let me tell you personally that this program here at RVU will not only help you get there, but prepare you in ways that I cannot even explain to you as you sit here today. It will give you the academic tools to succeed, but will also give you the grit, stamina, and confidence you need, not only to get where you want to go, but excel behind your wildest dreams. I sure met my goal of getting into med school, but it was so much more than that for me. We will not only survive medical school, but we will thrive because of the experiences we shared in the master's program. The program will also give you a school family, if you will. Um, all the people that I went to the program with, like Emily sitting here today, they are still my best friends in the medical school, and you have a really unique experience with them. The faculty will not only become our mentors, but some of our most cherished friends, cheerleaders, and confidants. Look around you right now. Your colleagues sitting here will become your biggest support system. They will become your people. If any of you are sitting here thinking, what if I can't do this? What if I'm not supposed to be here? Like I was at that point. Please use me as an example. If I can do this, you certainly can as well. You are meant to be here. I would like to end with a quote from someone who I consider to be a dear friend after many Netflix binges, Dr. Meredith Ray. You have to wonder why we cling to our expectations because the expected is what keeps us steady. The expected is just the beginning. The unexpected is what changes our lives. Thank you for listening, and please remember that the RBU community is here for you. And above all, you can do this, and you have so much to look forward to. I'm absolutely thrilled for you. Please reach out if you need any encouragement at any time. 
I would now like to invite one of my favorite professors to speak, Dr. Dwight Hertz. Thank you, Neil, for that nice introduction. She's one of my favorite students, even though we're not supposed to have some favorites. <laughs> okay, you guys got me. Uh, I gotta learn to slow down and read my email. I thought this was the white shirt ceremony. <laughs> well, just kidding. On behalf of the, my self-appointed directorship of edutainment, I would like to welcome you. That would be funny. <laughs> I used that line several months ago when we were interviewing potential med medical students. And the way this works is that there's probably 10 to 12 students and about six to eight, eight faculty members. And the tension is so high because we were meeting all of us for the first time, everybody's introducing themselves. And I could tell the tension was just really high that day. So I thought I'd have a little levity. So I introduced myself to the director of edutainment. And two people laughed. Most of the people didn't know what to do. And finally one student raised his hand and said, uh, I'm sorry, but I didn't see that on the website. <laughs> so, it's okay to laugh, okay? I'd like to thank Dr. Town for inviting me to speak today. She's my uh, colleague, my mentor, and my spiritual guide, okay? It's a real honor to give this talk as a, but she has very strict criteria. She said, I have to have an application, an interview, and then after some discussion, I'll decide who will be the given the keynote. Well, I'm happy to say I came in first out of the one application she received. <laughs> she also gave me strict things I could talk about and things I couldn't talk about. She said, number one, you should have a message. Number two, you could try to be funny. And number three, it has to be short. I'm pretty sure I can do one of those three. Okay? So, I believe strongly in the power of threes. Most people who are presented with new data can only remember three things. That's the power of threes. So I chose students, faculty, Dr. Adams, administration. Now several people warned me not to go there, but I just signed a new contract, so I think I'm safe. <laughs> so, students. There was two students that were given an exercise of team-based learning, which I like. And that, by that, I mean they had to have two pieces of paper that had several questions on them. And they were each supposed to write down their answers. And then after their answers, then compare their answers and come up with a final common answer to present to their faculty member. So they get their first two papers, and the one student starts writing like crazy, and the second student was doing nothing. He was looking kind of puzzled. Finally, the second student whispers to the first one, I don't get it, he goes, Old MacDonald had a what? The first student says, a farm. Oh, he goes, oh, farm, okay, got that. So the first student starts writing again, and the second student, still stuck and he doesn't write anything, goes, Psst. he goes, how do you spell farm? And the first student says, you don't know anything, do you? E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> Moral of the story is, everybody learns a little differently. Second thing is the faculty, there was a very tough chemistry professor. He had the notoriety of being the toughest professor on the campus. So, there four students formed a study group, and they thought they were going to work this out and do well in the class, which they were. So they got down to the final, ready to take the final exam, but there was a concert that night. And they really wanted to go to the concert, but they were a little nervous about it, and they were doing pretty well in the class, so the four went to the concert. Of course, the concert ran late, and they partied a little bit too much, and they overslept. So the next morning they woke up and they were just mortified and they thought, we have to present a unified front to this professor and ask him if he'll let, let us take a makeup exam. So they go to the professor and they said, sir, we overslept a little bit because we have a flat tire on the way to take this exam. Would you give us a makeup exam? And much to their surprise, the professor said, absolutely. So they were just delighted. He said, I'll go make up a, 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 a makeup exam and I'll be right back. So he did that, and he comes back, and he put all four of them in four different rooms, and he had them in their four booklets. And on the cover of the booklet, it said, final exam, 100 points. So they opened the first page, and the first question was, sodium chloride is commonly known as what? For five points. Like, oh, 
computer solve. This is easy. They flip to the second page and then the second question says, for 95 points, which tire? <laughs> for a substitute for experience. And thirdly, administration. Now, Dr. Adams was new and I was teaching, and I get a call from administration one day. His admin says, could I borrow 10 minutes of your teaching time? And my first response was, I can't say that here. <laughs> Our teaching time is so precious. What am I going to say? Of course, you can have 10 minutes of my time. So I do the proper thing. I Google him. He comes in before class, and at about 10 to 2, I see him there, and I stop, and I said, students have a real treat for you today. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Adams. He's the absolute trifecta. And they look at me and I said, first of all, he's a physician. I said, wow, isn't that cool? He has real patient experience. That's gotta be a plus for being, a, being, or being the president of a medical school. Second of all, he's a rear admiral in the Navy. And that brings on a very different perspective. We have a very strong presence in the military track here. I said, that just is awesome. And thirdly, I said, he was the dean of a med school. So he understands the educational piece. I said, there's only one thing I have a potential problem with. I said, how will I ever win an argument with him? <laughs> well, that story is, humor can only get you so far. <laughs> Thank you for your time. I would like to now introduce Joel Richard, my favorite anesthesiologist. <laughs> and we're very lucky to have him. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Hertz. Um, so I would like to, I will get to see a lot of you all and get to know you very well over the next year. Um, what I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about the white coat um, and what that means and why we think it's important that even though this is the, for a lot of you, the very beginning of your journey into healthcare, um, that it still is very crucial to understand where you are going and where you, um, and what is required of you on your journey there. In healthcare, white coats have had many historical meanings, um, cleanliness, purity, and others. The master's students here at RVU are given white coats in part for the symbolic meaning and in part for the message that they are going to convey. White coats are recognized symbols of healthcare professionals. Your white coat today will be part of your journey and growth into becoming an informed, professional, passionate agent of healthcare related change. You are embarking on a voyage of discovery towards a master's degree in biomedical science. Biomedical science is a field of knowledge which holds its fundamental grounding to be knowledge of the human body, of the patients and the public that you will someday serve. Your odyssey is not just understanding the human body, however, but more so understanding the human condition, human uniqueness. You are and will be servants to your community, a group determined to help people and society through the education that you will receive. Your training will not stop with healthcare here, however. You will also be responsible for embodying the core principles of a professional. When you go out into the community for your service learning, Dr. Van Winkle's class, you will be a professional. As you sit in our courses and learn, you will be a professional. As you hone your craft within and outside of this program, you will be a professional. Donning this white coat will be a constant reminder of the high calling that you've chosen to pursue. Our charge to you is that over time, you will find yourself wearing your white coat symbolically at all times, in all circumstances, representing your commitment to professionalism, excellence, integrity, compassion, and service. When you learn, when you help, when you serve, the white coat that you put on today affirms your commitment to being a future professional with all that it brings as well as all that it requires for you. I'd like to invite up Dr. Town now for the presentation of the White Coats.
Thank you, Dr. Roberts. We are now at that point that everyone has been waiting for, the presentation of the white coats. Uh, the students will process to the stage and individually announce themselves. They will state their first and last name, their home state, and the school where they earned their highest degree. If they are in the military, they will also state their rank and branch. You are welcome to please cheer or applaud after each student is coded. Uh, would the students please approach the stage?
afternoon. My name is Harry Kronikfeld, originally from Miami, Florida, and uh, graduated from the University of Colorado Boulder at Scobus. Hey y'all, my name is Rachel Abercrombie. I'm also from Miami, Florida. Um, went to the same high school, found out. Um, uh, and I went to Florida State University. My name is Marissa Robles, and I'm from Colorado, and I graduated from the University of Colorado Boulder. My name is Rita Villarreal. I'm from Arizona, and I graduated from San Antonio, Texas, St. Mary's University. My name is Ellie Barsh. I'm from Alabama, and I graduated from the University of Colorado Boulder. My name is Sarah Bailey. I graduated from Western Washington University, and I'm from Washington. I'm Seth Gedney. I'm from Kentucky, and I graduated from the University of Colorado in New York, Kansas. Hi, I'm Camille Crane, and I am from Colorado, and I graduated from the University of Colorado at Boulder. Donald Forker, I'm from South Dakota, and graduated from the University of Colorado. trustees, administration, faculty, and staff at Rocky Vista University, we're excited to join you on your first steps of this very important journey. These proceedings are now officially concluded. Families and friends are invited to greet the students in the lobby at the conclusion of the recessional on the second floor. Will the audience please stand until the end of the recessional?